Hey guys, how is this study session going? Okay, well, I guess I'll join you guys. Hey, man, what are you, what are you reading? Hey, hey, man, what are you reading? Is this a comic book? We're trying to study here. Jeez! I am studying. This is a comic book my teacher told me to read. Comic books are for kids. Nerds. There's no way a teacher would assign something like that. Well, she assigned it for our unit on the apocalypse. We're also reading McCarthy's The Road. But that's a book about zombies. They're not intellectual. Well, that's what I thought, but then I started to see the connections. Well, both of these stories show a father-son journey while also commenting on human desperation and the importance of hope. Plus, it's badass! So they're just using comics in classrooms now? Yeah, it's a new wave in education. That's just stupid! How about you prove it? Oh, I'll prove it all right. With this. The integration of graphic novels and their formats is influencing the classroom, challenging traditional methods of teaching. In an age revolving around an ever-increasing environment of constant stimuli and entertainment, students are demanding a change in the educational canon. One of the most recently adopted methods of education, spreading in popularity to both the humanities and the sciences, is the integration of graphic novels as relevant learning mechanisms. Jennifer Haynes' article, Why Teach with Comics, features the benefits of comics in education. She emphasizes how comics serve as perfect education vehicles for every learning style and intelligence. She also reiterates the benefits of comics to a struggling reader or English language learner. Concerned with literacy, school boards are becoming more flexible in terms of strategies to improve reading and writing skills in the United States. Gaining popularity in pop culture and visual media, graphic novels are the only form of literacy increasing in the United States. Therefore, it makes sense attempting to include graphic novels in education as a way to connect with struggling readers. Does that help you at all? I'm not a struggling reader. I'm trying to get into a university. Why would I need comic books? Well, I'm not too sure about that, but if you all follow me over here, I can show you a video. Okay. This is a common concern for many educators, but in 2010, Dr. Glenn Downey of the Ontario Institute for Studies and Education assigned a project to his 22 graduate students in a class called New Literacies, Making Multiple Meanings. The students evaluated K-12 teachers of different backgrounds and determined which skills were needed to promote competent literacy. After the class got back together, they found several concepts in common with all the findings, self-awareness, metacognition, critical thinking, navigation skills, and making connections. Dr. Downey mentions the literacy skills of the 21st century in his article as well. Having students navigate through different genres and across different platforms of learning as they critically think about and make connections between poetry, novels, short fiction, visual narratives, discussion boards, blogs, and hypertech fiction seems like a no-brainer. Wasn't that easy? Yeah, but can we even consider them literature? It's not like they've even won any awards or anything. Actually, I think I read in uh, Time Magazine that there's like Watchmen in their top 100 uh, pieces of literature. Well, yeah, he's actually got a point. There's actually this teacher that uses award-winning comic books in his classroom. Let's take a look. Rocco Frasacci passionately explains some of his tactics and gives new hope to the genre by challenging critics. Versace explains, what happens is that many adolescents begin to see comic books as many adults do, subliterate, disposable, and juvenile. Versace gives various examples of comics he personally uses in his literature classes and writes how they inspire literary reflection through cultural relativeness. He removes the superhero stereotype and provides references to some of the most acclaimed work of the 21st century, Spiegelman's Mouse 1 and Mouse 2, a biographical account of the Holocaust with historical focus on extended animal metaphors, Judd Winnick's Pedro and Me, Friendship, Loss, and What I Learned, a story that encourages tolerance with a man recalling the loss of a friend to AIDS, and Neil Gaiman's Sandman, representing the chronicles of existence as it intertwines with religion and morality. 
Well, wasn't that a great video? I still don't understand how reading with text and images helps. That's stupid! Well, actually, that's called a perpetual feedback system. Okay, but, but what is that? Well, I don't know how to define it, really, but let me look it up. Oh, here we go. Grant Tracy's review of Bradford Wright's Comic Book Nation, The Transformation of Youth Culture in America states, Wright regards comic books and their readers as locked in a perpetual feedback system. Comics, a dominant narrative form of the 20th century, reflect and inform how we view ourselves. Reading comics requires active participation, providing insight to the way we organize and perceive text and images, a lesson in looking inward and encouraging a stimulating sense of self-awareness. Comics, a harmonizing unit of both literature and art, permit readers to experience the best of both aesthetic worlds. Comic books is an art form? <laughs> well, hold on a second there, Buster. Check out this guy named Scott McCloud. Conventional ideas of art prevent the graphic novel from achieving respect in the field. But Scott McCloud, innovator of comics as an art form, proves comics are an art form in his book, Understanding Comics, The Invisible Art. Designed as a meta-narrative, a comic book about comic books, it's a great resource for anyone looking to get involved in teaching or learning about comics and graphic novels. Hey guys, check out this comic book! Alright guys, check this out. It's my sister's comic book. Uh, the, the, Arctic, the Arctic Marauder by Jacques Tardy. Guys, I actually found art! Let me see that. Alright, here you go, dude. Wow! Look at that! The Arctic Marauder! Oh my god, it's beautiful! <laughs> oh hey, I just thought of something. Uh, how would you use these comic books in a class that's not an English class? <sighs> Instead of drawing parallels between graphic novels and literature, Subjects in the sciences use the formatting of a sequential narrative to better illustrate their concepts. Jeremy Short, a professor of strategic management at Oklahoma University's Price College of Business, created a comic textbook, Atlas Black, Managing to Succeed, in order to provide a more entertaining learning experience for his students. Atlas Black, Managing to Succeed is a storytelling narrative about two college seniors starting a business, directly applying to the class concepts. Easy to read and free to access online without ads, students reported back with 85% satisfaction over the traditional textbooks, boring and expensive. In fact, Short's book was such a success that other versions describing business practices were released, compiling Atlas Black The Complete Adventures. Oh dude, you think my history teacher will go for that? Oh, I think we'll all be using comic books very soon. You know, I didn't used to like reading, but after reading the Walking Dead comic, I realized I really like to read about zombies. That's why I started to read World War Z. My history teacher gave me the option of reading Mouse 1 or Mouse 2 instead of Anne Frank and Knight. And I really like to learn from graphic novels because it's a lot more fun and easier for me. Yeah, I like how graphic novels are, you know, pertaining to my interests too, because I've always liked reading uh, 1984 and Brave New World and other dystopian pieces like that. and. Finally, I uh, was introduced to this novel, uh, graphic novel, V for Vendetta, and it's also in line with those things. It's pretty cool. I've always been interested in art, and after reading Understanding Rhetoric, which delivers information in a visual narrative, I started reading Scott McCloud, and now I want to do my next report or essay in a comic format. Hey, dude, we should start a comic book club. Yeah. You know, I think a lot of people at our school would really enjoy that. They'd be able to incorporate their comic books into what they're learning in classes and help, uh, you know, review each other's papers and whatnot. Yeah, I think I'll invite all my friends, if I had any. Well, it looks like we've all learned a valuable lesson here today about comic books and their importance in literature. Looks like my job here is done. <laughs>